Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I am playing in the new Lisa Eldridge Sorcery Palette. This is the Sorcery Palette. I actually used some of the shades in here in the first video I did with all of these eyeshadows. I will link it for you here and the description box down below, but I wanted to make sure to come back and do a dedicated video using all of these shades. I'm a little worried because me and blue eyeshadow don't always get along terribly well. I'm, I'm just intimidated. I don't know what to do with blue eyeshadow. So cross your fingers, take a deep breath, and let's jump into it. This is the only matte in the palette. This one's called Troubadour. And I'm a little worried because I know it's kind of like a tealy blue, but I'm gonna put this right here in the outer corner and through the crease. I like that Lisa is leaning into so many sparkly shades in here. I love a sparkly eye. It's one of my favorite things. I had somebody ask me the other day, you know, if Lisa's eyeshadows, the metallics, the luminous, the lusters, like would they be good for, you know, more mature lids or lids that are a little bit um, wrinkly? And I was like, you know what? I don't think it matters. I believe that you should wear what makes you happy makeup washes off at the end of the day. And I am not one of those people that kind of subscribes to, you know, makeup rules. The one thing I will tell you is that these don't add any additional texture to my lids. I'll be 48 in January. Um, I do deal with uh, some certain formulas really enhance that. And for me, it's that's not what I'm looking for. I want a sparkle, but that's not going to make my eye look craggly. And I feel like these are really great for the stage where my eyelids are right now. This deeper teal shade does give me a moment of pause. I don't normally wear shades like this, but I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, trusting Lisa and the process and hoping that we get to a place where I don't feel like I'm playing in mommy's makeup. I've got a clean brush here and I'm just gonna blend kind of like the top edge out because I don't know that I'm gonna be putting a ton more darkness up here and I really want this to fade nicely. I will tell you that these are some of my favorite shadows for blending. They blend with very little effort. I feel like they're the sort of eyeshadows I would reach for when I want a fun look, but I don't have a lot of time because I don't have to sit here blending forever. That's worth a lot. Oh, this blue makes me nervous. All right, I'm just gonna dip into the blue. This one's called Swan Song. This one's a metallic. I'm gonna pick it up on a brush and we're just gonna place it over this teal matte shade and take it over more towards the center of the lid as well, but we're definitely hitting the outside here. <laughs> okay, we keep going. I would love to know if you wear a lot of blue eyeshadow, what are your tips and tricks? I wear a lot of neutrals, warm and cool neutrals. Sometimes I will branch out more into like a, a pink or kind of like a deep forest green. Um, and I'm not opposed to color, but really intense color like this blue in Swan Song, that's a lot for me. I'm gonna take a little bit of that matte and troubadour, oh, not a little bit, apparently a lot, and run it underneath the eye. I need to wipe off the excess here. Boy, that, that's a lot. I got as much off of my brush as possible and I'm just gonna try and softly blend this out. This shade right here is metallic. This one is called Grotto. This is one that I have really been interested in, but oh, oh my goodness. I'm turning into a peacock. Ooh, okay, this is exciting. This had me a little worried, but look at that. Just for the sheer color of it. I don't know that it's exactly what I should be wearing with the blouse I have on today, but I can always change. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hello, Lisa. Okay, back to a clean brush for blending, and I'm just gonna kind of blend this into the crease. I'm leaning into sparkle in the crease and I'm okay with that. Again, one of those rules that a lot of people will tell you, never put anything sparkly in the crease. Wear what makes you happy. And right now, Grotto is surely serving happiness. Oh yes, yes it is. Uh -huh. This shade right here is a metallic. This one's called Mage. 
I'm gonna put this on the inner third of my lid. Maybe what I need to do is pick it up with my finger. Oh yes, hello. It's always hard to do it on the other side equally. This is firmly outside of my regular makeup comfort zone. I just want you to know that this is not the sort of eyeshadow that I regularly go for, but it does make my heart really happy. Like this was the one palette I'll tell you when I saw it, it made my heart go, oh, oh my goodness, what is that? And then I was like, but there's a blue and there's a green and what color is this deep one here? I don't know. Made me just a little bit nervous, but I was like, I gotta know. And so far, I love this, but this is also outside of my comfort zone. You might be laughing at me because this is not even pushing your boundaries, but I'm very like, <laughs> okay, breathe in, breathe out, keep going. The two shades that are left in here are this one called Mercurial, this one is a Luminous Duochrome, and this one, this is Madrigal, this is another metallic. And this is what made me reach for the blouse I'm wearing today. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this kind of right here. I feel like the difference between this eye and this eye is just kind of like the little bit of yellow in this green shade here. Maybe it's more of like a chartreuse, I would say. Oh, gorgeous. These layer over each other so well and the metallics pick up really nice with just your finger. This duochrome and mercurial is what I'm gonna run across my lower lash line. Kind of brings sparkle. and vibrancy down here. I mean, it's, it's pretty vibrant, but I love a little sparkle on the lower lash line. I went overboard. I, I know, I know, I know I went overboard, but I had fun doing it. Okay, I'm gonna throw on some mascara, some liner and lipstick, and I'll be right back. If you're curious, I'm wearing two different lip formulas today. Lisa's Velvet Sorcery, which is a matte. I have that down first. And then I have Lemma Pre, which is more of a glossy. It's the luxuriously lucent, the lightest shade that she makes. I have those kind of comboed on the lips today. But, oh my goodness, this eye look is giving me so much joy. Now, this is what happens when you apply with reckless abandon. <laughs> I was just like, more, 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 more. Um, and I think that this is a sort of palette that I would probably, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I could see myself pulling in, like say this mercurial shade on top of like a cooler kind of gray, or I could see myself using this really beautiful chartreuse shade uh, tapped over something, especially over this seamless mat here. Those would be really pretty. Let's just see what the swatches look like. The sole matte in this palette is a seamless matte. This is the shade Troubadour. This shade in Grotto is a metallic. Madrigal is also a metallic. This luminous duochrome is called Mercurial. This is another metallic in Mage, and the last metallic is in Swan Song. But look, look at the way that these guys shift and shine. Oh, they're absolutely stunning. I'm not sure I have the right lipstick blush combo to go with this eye, but I'm gonna keep playing with it because I really love the way that this sparkles and shines, the way the colors shift on the eye. I think it's absolutely stunning. Stunning. I never ever in my wildest dreams would have thought that I would have fallen in love with blues and greens. Ne never. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like there's a, a really good chance that although this kind of tealy green, this kind of dark shade here, um, kind of put me outside of my comfort zone when I first put it on the lid, I think I'm going to be using that as a base all the time because what I think is really interesting is to have it down as a base and then to put those metallics and the duochromes just smack dab over the top. So I started doing some swatching. I put down a swipe of this right here, and then I plopped every single metallic and duochrome over the top. And you can see the difference. You know, this is the matte by itself. These are those shades layered over the matte, and here are the shades on their own. They're so much more deep and broody and intense here. 
Ah, oh, I really, really like this. And I feel like Sorcery is the perfect name for this palette because you can do things, like if you're just looking at these shades in the pan, I never thought that a six pan with a blue in there and some greens that are a little bit outside of my comfort zone would look this incredible on the eye. And I feel like just the way that they layer and build over themselves really do make it a magical experience. Oh, this one's fantastic. I think that out of all of them, this is the one that has potential to let you just kind of let your imagination run wild. I'm also really curious to see what these metallics look like, kind of tapped over the black in another one of her palettes. Um, this one right here, this one's called Lamp Black. This is the Vega palette, and this is the black I'm using as eyeliner today. I didn't actually pull out an eyeliner, just pulled out a brush and threw some of this on, and fantastically, I didn't get any fallout. Um, so I, I really like that, but I feel like this sort of um, combo here, letting you see what they look like on their own and then what they look like over something deeper. You really can change the shade of these. Like one of them is called Mercurial. I feel like they all have that quality to them. They're very changeable. They're very malleable. You can create your own desired look based on how you layer these. And the textures are beautiful. I feel like you get a really nice, my eyes don't feel heavy even though I just kept packing on more and more eyeshadow. I'm so glad I picked up Sorcery. I'll just tell you, when I first saw Lisa's video showing these eyeshadow palettes, I saw this one and I was like, ooh, beautiful, but not for me. And my initial impulse was only to pick up three out of the five new palettes, the ones that I knew I would get good use out of, like this one in Cinnabar, or this one in Muse, or this one in Vega. I felt like those would be the sorts of palettes that I could reach for and use regularly. And yes, these might be more of my daily use palettes, but this Sorcery eyeshadow palette, oh my goodness, this is like a party in a palette. I would love to know, do you wear blues, greens? Do you like sparkly shades? Did you pick up this palette in Sorcery? Have you tried it? Do you love it? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. I will also link in the description box um, videos to all the other palettes that I have tried individually, as well as that first initial try-on. I will have all of those for you in the description bar, as well as my Lisa Eldridge playlist. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you again soon.